If you're looking to stock up on AR magazines, nothing beats a trip to the Army Surplus store where you can get used ones in decent shape uh, for five bucks a piece. Now, you could use them as is, they would be fine. They've proven themselves, I think, up until this point. Uh, but for a few more dollars, you can have a high quality, reliable magazine for cheaper than the polymer counterpart. <laughs> the polymer counterpart. Uh, stick around, I'll show you how we're gonna do it. First step is disassembly. We got one disassembled already. If you're not familiar with the disassembly process, I'll show you real quick. You've got your floor plate here. It's got a couple dimples in it here and here. That's the pressure holding it on with the spring. Just pop a flathead under. Get them up over. Hear the crust on this, push it out, keep your hand over the spring so it doesn't shoot out everywhere. Flip it upside down. All right. Give it a push with your finger. Lightly pull on your spring. Angle it out. Now we're ready to refinish. Make them look like new. Before we get to deep cleaning the magazine housing for the body, we're going to get rid of the green follower because we're going to replace it with the uh, Magpul anti-tilts. And you'll notice in here that it just hooks through. You can take some pliers and give it a little until it pops out of here. And these bad boys are going in the garbage. Same on this guy. Pop it out of the hole and say see you later to that. Set the magazines and the floor plate aside for now. And I'm going to clean these with uh, two things first. First one, there's some sticky stuff on here. Well, acetone. These through most adhesive, so we're just going to give it a little. Splash. And toothbrush. I'm not going to use too much of this or the wife will get mad when she can't redo her nails. Just scrubbing good. gunk off uh, and then give them a rinse. After giving them a rinse just dry them off and you can see they weren't terribly dirty. They were, you know, had a little grime on them but not so bad for their age. Um, next we're gonna hit them again just to make sure all the old stuff is off. I'm just gonna use a little 
alcohol. Same thing, I'm just going to put it on there. Hit it with the brush. And while the bristles are wet, we're just going to get in there. Clean out. Nothing too major on the inside. Now that's done. Gonna same as last time. Uh, rinse it, wipe it off, let them dry completely. While these finish drying, we're going to set them aside and clean our springs. We're not going to go too crazy on these. They're not super dirty. And this really isn't even necessary if you don't want to, but I figure while you're in there taking everything apart, you might as well. What I'm going to do is just take an alcohol wipe. Just kind of trail it down until you get to the bottom. Just do that for both of them. Rinse, let them dry, and we'll get on to the next step. So the springs are clean. Just hit them with the alcohol wipes. Not going to even rinse them. Just going to let that air dry. Um, got them pretty clean. What I'm going to do just to give a little extra corrosion protection is put a little heat on these and uh, wipe them down with a little frog lube and then buff it out. Uh, you haven't used frog lube, I have a video on that, but you're going to hit it with a hair dryer just for a couple seconds, just to get it warm enough. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the alcohol wipes and just run down the spring, let it dry a little, and buff it off. So now that those had time to, to cure in there, just going to do the same thing. Take a microfiber and just go over each piece, get off all the excess after it dries. Put on our new followers, and then we're done with the springs. So I'll show you how to do that. Grab your new follower. Only goes on one way. You'll see that the hole there in that part of the spring has to meet it. And you'll probably need your pliers again. Try without pliers. Easier with them. Struggle with it on camera, as it should be. Do it with your good hand, not your left hand if you're a righty like me. Be sure to not edit this out because it looks really good. Alright, there it comes. Drop it in the hole. And you got your new follower on there. Pete on the other one. We're going to set these aside while we finish the bodies. You don't really have to worry about the floor plates, but while I was here, I just hit them with an alcohol wipe uh, and then some frog lube. Just buff them out after it sets in there for a minute. You really don't have to do anything with them if you don't want to. to. be honest, you don't even have to do this whole process if you don't want to. But, you know, peace of mind. Add a little bit of reliability to it. Buff those out. Good to go. Let's move on to prepping these housings uh, for refinishing. Alright, so we're going to refinish these, and I'm sure you guessed by that, I mean paint them. So what I'm going to do is just rough them up a little bit with some fine grit sandpaper. Very little, they're already pretty scratched. 
just help the paint appear a little better. And rinse them. Make sure you get all the dust off. Now that they're prepped for paint, I'm going to hit them with a coat of, that's right, just good old Rust-Oleum uh, in the closest thing to a green as possible that's not super black or glossy, so we don't want the satin green. Um, I mean, you could Duracoat this, Cerakote this, Aluma hide it. Um, I like to do things in a day, um, and this will work just fine. Not real snobbish about my finishes on a magazine that's going to be thrown around. So we're going to take it out to the makeshift paint booth here, hit it with a can of Rust-Oleum Green Satin. Uh, let's head outside and we'll take care of that. The only thing I'm going to do before that, and I'm not going to show you, is the insides are a little rough, so I'm just going to hit them with a little frog lube and then wipe it out just to put some protection in there because it's missing some finish. Um, it's a little gritty in there. Besides that, we'll hit the paint booth and finish these guys up. Alright, so we got our makeshift spray booth and we're getting ready to refinish these. Sorry if you can't hear me, I'm outside doing a little handheld on this. Uh, most people will cut it off about here where it inserts into the mag well. Uh, they state that's clearance issues so they don't paint up there. I'm not real concerned about that so I'm painting the whole thing. So, just gonna take our paint, give it a little... Alright, so they're all painted up. I'm not gonna spin them. They're just gonna sit and dry. I'll probably let them dry about four hours before I reassemble. 24 hours, of course. Let them cure before you try to put them in a gun or anything. So, there they are. After they dry, I'll show you the reassembly process and you're finished. A couple good looking magazines, good as new. Right, paint's done and dry. Uh, next thing, before you're done, just assemble it. So, here's what you look like. Paint it up. Got your new follower. It's gonna go in this way. Just drop it in. Push your spring. Retain it with your finger, take your base plate, make sure you put it on the right way. Also make sure you're holding your magazine the right way. Use it to hold the spring, get it moving, lift it up over, push, locks in place, new follower. Won't tilt. I will admit that I was wrong. I should not have painted the top because it does make it a very tight fit to get in the gun. Um, but it's easy enough. Just hit it with a little sandpaper and wear it down, or just run it in and out a few times, and it'll fit. But there you go. GI mags refinished. New followers. Reliable, cheap. Pretty safe bet. Uh, as always, be prepared. God bless.